Hello everyone, I am Mohammed Dehkani Sultani, a research associate at the University of Edinburgh, United Kingdom. Today, I will discuss an extended orientation-based random waypoint mobility model, which is the main idea of this presentation. This is the outline of this presentation. First, I will introduce Li-Fi cellular networks. Then the conventional random waypoint and the orientation-based random waypoint mobility models will be presented. Next, I will go into the extended orientation-based mobility. Simulation results and discussions will be presented after that. Finally, I will wrap up this talk by summarizing the key observations of the model and outlining plans for future work. Li-Fi is one subset of optical wireless communication, which is a fully bidirectional network technology. It uses visible light in downlink so that the light is used for both illumination and communication purposes. It also may use infrared in uplink. Li-Fi can support high-speed data transmission through LEDs. Li-Fi can provide high security as light does not penetrate through walls. Like other wireless technologies, Li-Fi is also able to support communications for mobile users. The random waypoint mobility model is one of the most popular mobility models to evaluate the performance of mobile users in wireless cellular networks. A simple animation of the random waypoint model is shown here. Based on this mobility model, destinations are chosen uniformly random within the room area. Users move on a straight line toward destinations. The user's speed is constant between each two consecutive waypoints. Users may pause for a certain amount of time at destinations. The pause time can be modeled as exponential distributions. Device orientation is an important factor that can affect the performance of user equipment in not only Li-Fi systems but also in other systems such as millimeter wave and terahertz communications. The device orientation can be specified based on three angles of alpha, beta, and gamma, where alpha determines the rotation about the z-axis, beta is the rotation about the x-axis, and gamma defines the amount of rotation about the y-axis. In order to determine statistics of these three angles, we conducted a set of measurements for both static and mobile users. The detail of the experimental setup is given in the paper cited at the bottom of this slide. The measurement results show that the angles alpha, beta, and gamma follow a Laplace distribution for static users, while they are well fitted to a Gaussian distribution for mobile users. Moreover, it's demonstrated that alpha, beta, and gamma are correlated random processes. In the conventional random waypoint model, the orientation of devices is not considered. Then we propose the orientation-based random waypoint mobility model in which the orientation of mobile devices has been included. It comprises only the movement of users where the orientation is modeled as a correlated Gaussian random process. In order to provide a more realistic framework for mobility, in this study we proposed an extended orientation-based random waypoint model in which the pause time has been also considered, so that during the pause time, the angles alpha, beta, and gamma are modeled as correlated Laplace random processes. Furthermore, and motivated by the experimental measurements, the angle beta is modeled as a weak sense stationary random process over small durations of TI. This can be confirmed from one example of measurements for a static user shown on the right side of this slide, where beta is a weak sense stationary random process over the periods T1, T2, and T3. Therefore, the aim is to generate correlated Gaussian random processes for alpha, beta, and gamma angles when the user is mobile and correlated Laplace distribution processes when the user is static. Also, both Gaussian and Laplace random processes should statistically match the experimental measurements 
to provide a realistic framework for performance analysis. One simple method to generate a correlated Gaussian random process is to pass a white noise process through a linear time invariant filter. For example, using a linear autoregressive AR1 model. On the right side of this slide, 1 million generated samples of the beta angle are shown. As can be seen, the samples follow a Gaussian distribution with a mean and variance similar to the experimental measurements. Also, the average coherence time, which is 174 milliseconds, is again similar to the experimental result for the beta angle. In order to generate a correlated Laplace random process, we need to multiply two correlated Gaussian random processes and take either the real or imaginary parts of them. On the right side, the results of again 1 million generated samples of beta angle based on this technique are shown. The samples follow a Laplace distribution where the statistics of them, that is mean, variance, and coherence time of the samples are similar to the experimental measurements. As a use case, we aim to evaluate the extended orientation-based random waypoint model in a Li-Fi cellular network and compare its performance with the conventional random waypoint where the orientation is neglected. Four Li-Fi access points are considered in a room of 10 meters by 10 meters, and the rest of the Li-Fi parameters are illustrated in this table. We should note that Li-Fi is just a use case and other optical wireless networks and millimeter wave systems can be also studied with the consideration of the extended random waypoint mobility model. The parameters of the extended orientation-based random waypoint are presented in this table, which are taken from the experimental measurements as explained in the paper cited at the bottom of this slide. The small periods of TIs are generated based on an exponential distribution with a mean value of Tm. The mean value of beta at each Ti follows a uniform distribution from the range of beta min bar to beta max bar. Omega is the movement direction between two consecutive waypoints as shown in this figure. In this slide, the performance of the extended orientation-based random waypoint model is compared with the conventional random waypoint where the orientation is neglected. Handover rate has been considered as the performance metric. From these results, it can be seen that for a small pause durations, handover rate is more affected by the speed of users. For high pause durations, handover rate is more affected by the orientation of the device. The gap of 0.4 confirms the importance of the random orientation, which is neglected by the conventional random waypoint model. For high pause durations, handover rate decreases, but with lower speed. It's almost saturated. In this slide, we aim to investigate the impact of the different parameters of the extended orientation-based random waypoint on the system performance. The impact of the mean value of random periods Ti on the handover rate is shown in the left figure. It can be seen that the handover rate slightly decreases as the mean value of random periods Ti which is denoted as Tm increases. It should be noted that higher values of Tm correspond to longer stationary processes. The impact of the mean value of the pause time on the handover rate is illustrated in the right figure. From this figure, it can be inferred that a saturation in the handover rate for high values of ETP can be seen. This is because the user stays static for longer. The handover rate slightly increases as the variance of beta i bar increases. In this work, we introduced an extended orientation based random waypoint model which considers pause time. The extended orientation based mobility is able to provide a more realistic framework for performance analysis by matching with the 
statistics of the experimental measurements. A gap of 0.4 in the handover rate between the conventional random waypoint model and the extended orientation based random waypoint is due to neglecting random orientation of the device. The extended orientation based random waypoint can be evaluated in millimeter wave or terahertz communication systems where the orientation of the device cannot be neglected. This will be the aim of future research studies. That is the end of my presentation for today. Thank you so much for your time and please let me know if you have any questions.